so we have a simple hello world application right here the first thing i need to do is to get the room dependency because i want to construct the database so i would go to the official documentation and get a dependency for room when i go to the page for room i'll go to room release notes coming here you see a lot of dependencies all i need is just this all the rest are optional and are not needed for this example I can paste it here this i'll put it up here and uh, come so the variable or symbol here is talking about if you don't want to write the version explicitly here you can have a variable here where you can change the version so that it affects some dependencies instead of changing each of them individually so that that's a good tip so let me sync the next thing is to design the table now the table of this application is going to have an id an item and quantity so the item is like the item name and the quantity is how much of these items do you want to purchase so i'll call this the db table i'll have public int id public string item and public int quantity so this is just a normal java class but now we want to make it a room entity so what do i do i'll make this the primary key the next is to construct our room dial class It's an interface. I'll annotate it with add DAO. So the first operation is to insert new items. So I will say void insert item. And it's going to collect objects of the DB table. And I'll annotate this with at insert. And that's all. I also have deletes. So I'll say void delete item collects a db table this db table will have the id and the information it is to delete now i have get all items i will say above this is a query And the query is now when you're writing query on room database DAO, it can correct you in case your query is pointing to a non existing table or the query is wrong. For example, if I do this, it will tell me that there's no table called 
dbta so it's actually helpful it's not just a string that maybe it's wrong and then you find out it's wrong when you run your application as you're typing the query it will tell you whether this query might actually run now i don't just want to get all the item once i want to get it as a live data now live data will update me once the information in this query changes so it's like a real-time update if i leave it like this if i get all the items and a new item is added for me to get the update i will have to query again but if i put live data around it it will update me each time a new item is added so all i will need to do is to call this method once and it will keep updating me if any new item has been added that will affect this query so i get real-time updates always i'll also have integer count items so this is just to give me the amount of items in the database so i'll say query select Now, I also like this to update me real time. The next thing we need to do is to create the database. So, I'll come here and db database. an abstract class so, so remember what db database does all i need to do first is i'll put at database and then i'll list the entities entities in this case the only entity is the db table dot class and this is the version one so in case you update the database, you can keep changing these versions. So I'm going to list the DAOs. So I'll say public abstract db DAO DAO. So that is all. We want to have a method inside here that will help us get the instance of this class using the singleton design we have private static hey i called it db database well that's not what i wanted db database the database now this class should extend room database This is the singleton design. If the database is null, we create a new instance using the room database builder. It collects the context, we get the application context, we state the database class. You can name this anything, and then we call build. So if the database is not null and we call get instance it wouldn't have to do this again and it will just return this in the DAO class we forgot to add add delete here 
or the delete instruction. So take note of that. So this is our UI. We have a spinner, button, and edit text here, text views here. And here, there's going to be a recycler view. So let's look at what is the UI. So on the button, I have a button below that is constrained to the ground. And then you have a spinner on top of the button and edit text on top of the spinner, a recycler view on top of the edit text and two text views on top of the recycler view. So how is this going to operate? We'll have the user write the item he or she wants here. The spinner will be used to select the amount of elements. And then when you click add, it is to add this value to the database so that it reflects in the recycler view. And then this text view is to keep on showing us the amount of all the elements in real time. So this will be working with this command from the DAO because it's a live data. It will be updating us in real time. And because this is going to be working with this, anytime we add a new item, this query will update the recycler view to show the new item. So next, let us get the data that the spinner will be displaying. That will be in our string. So we create a string array. We just have an array called item count array, and then we have one, two, three, four, five. So the person can add at most five items. Let's go to our code and populate this spinner. So we'll find the view by ID, the spinner, create a new array adapter, and then we set the drop down resource. Now we set the adapter of the spinner to be this adapter. For this adapter, the array is the array we created, which is item count array. Remember the name of the array. So that's that for the spinner. If we run this, we can see that we can now select the amount of items we wish from the spinner. So let's find the other views from the UI using the normal find view by ID. So we have our text view that's on top, the recycler view, the edit text and the button. So the text view, the recycler view, the edit text and the button. Now I talked about a repository, which would be like a middleman between the database and the view model. So let's create a repository class. I'll call this item repository. Let us enable Java 8 in our project structure so that we can use Lambda expressions. I'll go to 1.8, 1.8, and I'll click apply.